Ba -ba -ba -ba. Greetings all, Last Outrider here with a follow-on video for Master of Mankind, The Review. Now, it came to my attention that there are a lot of people who have not read this book. More importantly, there are people who have not even heard the changes this book has made to 40K. As such, I've decided to make a video that tells you the top 10 changes Master of Mankind has made to 40K. I say this because I've seen other videos online and people are just talking about the fluff like this book does not exist, even though it's been out for two years. So, for those and everybody else, this is to help you. One, the Emperor is just a normal guy with psychic powers. At least at the, that point in time. <clears throat> this comes from the fact that the Sisters of Silence have described that when they watch the Emperor sit on the Golden Throne or talk to him or anything like that, he just looks like a guy. No glowing halo, nothing special, he's not changing, there's no cre freaky about him, he just looks like a guy. Two, the Emperor does not have any foresight. He can't see the future. You know how we all used to have the Emperor's tarot and believe that he could see ahead and forecast the future or things like this? No. According to the book, the Emperor does not know what's going to happen tomorrow. He did not know the Primarchs were going to turn traitor. He did not know they were going to be stolen from the vault. He did not see the future while they were being stolen and decide to let it happen anyway. According to the book, what happened was is that when the Primarchs were being stolen from the vault and he came there and stopped it for a second, the only thing he was thinking was is, I put a lot of work into building these 20 guys and I have a choice. I can either kill them all now or let them be taken and try to recover them later, hoping that they are still usable. He decided on the latter. It had nothing to do with seeing the future. Three, the Emperor is not going to die on the Golden Throne. The Emperor is going to be killed by a demon called End of Empires. This demon is currently possessing one of the Adeptus Custodes because they couldn't kill it or send it back to the war. And the demon itself says that it will take literally millions of years before it could corrupt a custode in, into portraying the Emperor, which basically means that the custodes are um, more immune to chaos than even the Grey Knights. So, uh, for who is this demon? This is where things start to get fun. Uh, according to the Emperor, the first murder was two brothers. One brother killed another brother. And the person being killed screamed because he was being killed. And the person killing him screamed uh, because, I don't know, while killing him. These combined screams went off into the warp and created a demon called the End of Empires. His name is the screams, the sound of these screams. And this is the first human-connected demon. Apparently the first time the warp took an interest in humanity. What is more interesting is that the person who was murdered 
according to the emperor, was his father. Which means that the emperor's father was killed by his uncle as the first murder. Yes, that's what it says. Um, but a but a boom. The golden. Okay. Now this is interesting. The custodes are not called that by the by the emperor. They are called the ten thousand or the golden. And apparently they are closer related to the Primarchs and the Primarch project than they are to space marines. Why? Because apparently it was the genetic information that the Emperor learned from creating the 10,000 that he used to create the Primarchs and the space marines. So essentially the Legio Custodes, the, the the Adeptus Custodes is, are, are mini Primarchs, not super space marines. They have not had any surgery. All of their extra organs and abilities all come purely from genetic mani manipulation. Organically grown that way. No surgery or anything is involved, which is why each one needs to be created individually he created 10,000 of them the first one Constantine Valdor and also captain general of the 10,000 is said to have the same combat abilities if not other abilities of a primarch yes that's what the book says and 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 to demonstrate this in my last video, like I said, this book sets up the video to become a player character. It also sets up that there's going to be new rules for, for the 10,000, the Custodes, um, as mini Primarchs instead of Space Marines. The book says that no Space Marine of any rank or ability was able to defeat last longer than three strikes with a custode in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Whether it's a legionnaire, sergeant, chapter, master, it doesn't matter. They're all dead in three strikes. And the reason for this is because the, it takes three strikes for the custodes to completely understand the fighting style of who they're fighting. They parry three different blows and then kill the person. And apparently the Captain General could possibly even do that with a Primarch. That sounds like rules, for a future rules to me. In addition, the Custodes now have the ability to deflect las bolts and bolter fire with their spears. It says that pretty much the only way that you can kill them is by shooting them from behind when they're in combat or by overwhelming them with an insane amount of basically bum charging them with 50 people. And you may knock one down and get them. Uh, there are also kind of uh, custodian helpers. So what happens is as they're spinning their spear and shooting when it runs out of ammo, they toss their spear over their shoulder. One of their helpers grabs it, reloads it, and tosses it back. In the meantime, while it's being reloaded, they then use dual meridian swords instead of their guardian spear. This sounds very specific to me, like we can foresee this coming out as playable rules at some time in the future. Next, the Primarchs. It is often and even still talked about how the Emperor looks at the Primarch as his children, as these are the children of the Emperor and Horus was his favorite son. You are wrong. 
the book clearly states that the emperor has absolutely no emotional attachments to any of the primarchs. He doesn't even refer to them by name, but by the number they were created. Horus is not Horus. He's referred to as number 16 when the emperor is not talking to him. He looks at them only as weapons that he created, generals to take over the Great Crusade so he can go back to his lab. He does not care about them any further than that. They are purely tools. How do they retcon all of the past relationships that they've had with them? Very simply. He said, he was asked, why, do, why does he allow the Primarchs to call him Father? His answer was, why does Geppetto allow Pinocchio to call him Father? The Primarchs are pretty much puppets, machines, who think they're human. He said that the Primarchs and the Space Marines consume recognition like it was a physical substance, like it's something that they literally eat to survive on. And that's why he did it. It's all just an act. To prove this, there was a little side story about Angron and the butcher's nails in his head. The emperor said he could easily remove the butcher's nails, but he chose to, left, to leave them in because he'd rather have a diminished Primarch watching over the world eaters than have to do it himself, pretty much. And even better, it's shown that Angron isn't really a Primarch anymore. The Butcher's Nails have now been changed from an implant that has been inserted into Angron's brain to make him psychotic into the butcher's nail R Angron's brain. That's why the Emperor won't remove them, because they literally cannot be removed. They are his brain. Angron is essentially an AI, a, a servitor. That, that's what it says. If he removes it, he's literally taking out his brain. And this AI, this computer in, that runs Angron, basically sees everything as pain. Lifting his hand is pain. Twitching a finger is pain. Everything is pain. Except going into a berserk rage. That's not something that the Butcher's Nail is doing to him. That is something that the computer in his head, how it sees the world. And the Emperor left it there. And left him, considered destroying him, but said, nah, he's still more useful alive. Huh. No Imperium. The end of the book also definitively says there will no longer, no chance for there being another Golden Age. The Warhammer 30K is done. Uh, the Imperium lost the war. He, he did say that it doesn't matter whether whatever Horus does, whether they, they defeat him at the Siege of Terror or not, it's irrelevant. 
because while they are learning about how to defeat Horus, Chaos is also learning how to defeat the Imperium. So it's irrelevant. Whether he kills Horus, of course at that time he didn't know, there'll just be somebody else to replace Horus. And that next person will learn from their mistakes and do a better job. This is a foreshadowing, of course, of Abaddon, which is exactly what he's done. He looked at all Horus's mistakes, he's going to do a better job, that's the end of the Imperium. They basically said, that's it, it's over. Does that mean it's the end of humanity? No, it means it's the end of the Imperium. Something else will come next. But the Emperor isn't going to die on the Golden Throne. Abaddon isn't going to kill him. He's only going to be killed by this demon. So you don't have to worry about that. Let's see. Human evolution. Why is the Emperor doing all of this? Again, it, it didn't clarify where the Emperor came from. He, he kind of seems to just say he was born. He doesn't say he was born from a generation of psychers or anything like that. He apparently just says he was born. Um, and he said at the time of the first murder, he, he realized that humanity is going to be a race that's ten times more psychic than the Eldar. Um, and that when they fall, this pattern of a psychic race emerging and then being corrupted by chaos, and then falling, is a cycle which occurs in the galaxy. It happened to the Eldar, it's happened to others, and the difficulty now is, is that if it happens to humanity, it would literally destroy the entire galaxy. It seems that he's trying to prevent that. Religion. Why does the Emperor not like religion in the Imperial Creed? It was given as a very specific reason. Because anytime somebody prays, the warp hears it. And even if it's a good person praying for good things, a, a righteous person wanting righteous things. It doesn't matter. A demon will hear it, and a demon might decide to grant that prayer only because it sees the possibility of turning this person into a potential chaos worshiper in the future. It will grant some minor prayers and blessings and give them what they want and then slowly slowly work to corrupt the person therefore all religion will eventually turn into a chaos cult the exception to this is of course praying to the emperor the emperor hears the prayers and can then also bless it or grant it but obviously zero chance of that turning into a chaos cult if the emperor he, he answers the blessings and that appears to be why the imperial credo uh, uh, cult is the only religion allowed because you can only pray to the emperor and why nothing else can be allowed to be prayed to because no matter how good the intentions chaos will always always end up turning it into a cult um, let's see. Which also explains then that if this awakening of humanity happens, instead of praying to the chaos like uh, the Eldar did and the others, if everybody then awakens and praying to the Emperor, it appears like this is going to be the ascension that happens. And if it happens with a explosion or an event that is ten times greater than the creation of Slanesh, that will be the awakening of the Emperor 
as a as a chaos entity. Um, not a chaos entity, but as an entity in the warp. Ten times greater than Slanesh. Which might be enough to do the Emperor's plan of sealing this galaxy off, this reality off from chaos and the warp completely. Mm-hmm. Next. We learned a little bit about the webway. The webway is constructed from a material that comes from another galaxy. It looks like an organic material similar to Wraithbone that comes from another galaxy. Now, I don't know about you, but I only know about one other race army list in 40k that we know is organic and comes from another galaxy and it begins with a T this could then be again a, a, a precursor that the Tyranids are somehow connected to this race that was here that built the webway that came from another galaxy went away and now has come back Those are, yeah, those are the top ten things that you need to take away from this book, which has completely changed 40K, in my opinion. Um, yeah, that comes down to it. Let me know what you think of that. And if you have any other questions, until next time, bye.